welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, hopefully you're watching me in black and white because this is the continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series. Far too many words. And I am delighted to say that this is the next round with the ever gorgeous, ever youthful Anne. So, if you want to find out exactly what the picture is that is our inspiration this time, which palette or palettes I have used, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend EU are in precisely the right place. Here it comes. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Still blistering hot even though I've waited until the evening to film. So the fan is on. I'll try and remember to talk a little bit louder than usual. Right. Uh, hopefully the intro is in black and white. Hope I remember to do that. Uh, because this is, of course, the continuation of my photo inspiration series. And it's uh, the latest round with Anne. And it was her turn to choose the picture. And the picture she sent is actually a picture that she has created herself. And I love that. I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm going to put the picture up there. I've got it on my phone. Uh, and it's called Sunlight Dancing on Stone. And to me that is just beautiful. The, the starkness of the, the bluey grey sea against that bright teal rock with the gorgeous gold figurine on top. That's just... I love that. Love that completely. So, um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus, I'm going to make the majority of the eye the kind of bluey grey of the sea with perhaps some of the lighter blue for the sky above it. And then I think on my lid, I'm going to try and do the teal and the gold, see how that works out. Um, the bright sort of cream coloured rock off to the side. That's probably going to be my highlight and my inner eye colour. So, let's get started. Uh, I have chosen Jeffrey's Blue Blood because it's got some lovely blues and some pretty nice greys in here as well. And this gorgeous Cullinan shade that I can use for in a corner. It's also got a shimmery teal or a matte teal depending on how I feel at the time and I've grabbed Thirsty and I'm going to use the gold there Lick because it's one of the few shimmers out of this palette that I actually like. So let's get you zoomed in. Um, this is a teaching channel but I don't tend to go as deep into my usual teaching routine when I'm doing this because it's more about the collaboration and uh, the picture than it is me going into my teaching. Let's zoom that out just a fraction, there we go. What I will do though is discuss eyes. Now I've got deep set eyes, they're also known as double lidded eyes, but a lot of people think they are hooded eyes when they're not. I'm just going to explain the difference to you. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have hooded eyes, in which case you'll have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, with having deep set eyes I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get in that I get transfer of shimmers onto the upper lid 
um, I get uh, if, if I'm cutting my crease I can't just follow my socket I have to cut up onto the upper lid and even when I use glitter glues I end up with bare patches usually right through the middle there let me show you why if I cover my visible mobile lid and then close my eye you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back away and if I cover my static lid and do the same thing you can see I've got lid there that gets tucked back in as well so that is the difference between deep set eyes or double lidded eyes and hooded eyes now if you've got hooded eyes you can still follow my tutorial get yourself a brush something like this and just sketch out where you need your crease to fall on your static lid so you are creating a mobile lid on your static lid obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes right uh, with my chronic pain I do blend quite slowly sometimes so if I'm going too slowly for you do feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up I really will not be offended mainly because well let's be honest I'm not going to know am I right I'm going to go in with this um, this is a Carla Crease 515 brush and I'm going to start off by dipping into um, let's have another look at that picture I'm going to go into a mixture of I'm Cold and Blue Blood I'm just going to tap this onto the lid all of my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Yes, I SPF'd even though it was night time because it's habit. Um, and the eye primer that I'm using is the white base from Crow and Pebble. Um, I do have a discount code for them and they do do eye bases starting from white and going up to deeper colours so if you're wanting one that's more your skin tone you can indeed find one hopefully so once I've patted this on because obviously I've not set the base because I want these colours to pop as much as possible so I'm just patting these on building the colour up and then very very light blending across that lid to represent the sky now I've followed Anne for quite a while actually um, absolutely love her directness and her frankness she's uh, doesn't mix her words, bless her. Um, she's very much to the point, and I like that. Uh, you know, she's she's a really lovely woman. She's she's the kind of woman I could imagine sort of popping around for a coffee, sitting at her kitchen table, and setting the world to rights. You know. And uh, I'd, I'd been tempted to ask her if she wanted to collab, but having had a rather bad experience with a YouTuber who shall remain nameless, where I got a very, very curt and almost quite rude response when I asked if they would like to collab. Um, it kind of put me off asking people so I'd, I'd made a point of saying I think Anne commented on one of my photo inspiration um, films that I'd done saying um, I really love this series I hope you keep it up and I said as long as people are happy to keep collabing with me then I'm happy to keep the series going 
and the next thing I know I get a direct message from her saying I'll collab with you. Yay! Fantastic! Uh, and that's how our collab came around. Um, and I absolutely love the fact that we're using a photo today of a piece of artwork that she's actually created. So it does put a bit of pressure on me, I will admit, to make sure I do a really good job here and interpret her work of art in the right way, basically. Uh, I'm sitting back and just checking that the shapes that I'm creating with these are about the same because obviously, unless you do a James Charles and Photoshop everything I don't Photoshop anything what you see is what you get with me in my pictures all my photos are achievable unless I've got an obvious Snapchat filter on where I've got dog's ears or something and uh, you know, all my photos don't have filters on the most I'll do is uh, adjust the brightness And then I adjust the brightness of the whole thing. I don't blend any edges. I don't do any any kind of jiggery pokery with them. Um, but yeah, unless your eyes, nobody's eyes are exactly symmetrical, so it's always best to sit back and just check the shapes you're doing are about the same. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here. I'm going to clean this brush off with. I'm going to go in with a slightly more tapered brush. I think I might grab my... This is a Morphe M562. And I'm going to go into, um, I think, Power first. Just to see how dark this grey comes up. I'm just going to run this through the crease because obviously now I'm trying to do the trying to represent the um, the beautiful steel grey blue sea that she's got going on at the bottom of the picture. I'm just gonna give that a bit of a blend against that blue. I think I might have made that blue a bit too bright actually. Never mind it's all about it personal interpretation. I'm sure Anne won't be too upset if I've made her sky a little bit bluer on my eyes. Than... Although of course it could be this blue because obviously I'm looking at it on my phone and I know sometimes when I get to the editing stage and I look at um, the picture on my laptop when I'm editing and I just think wow that looks a completely different colour on here. Um, which is why, if you've not watched my photo inspiration series before, the only rules are you can only use the colours that are in the picture, you can't add them in, so I couldn't suddenly add a red or a green, because there's no red or green in that picture. Um, but you don't have to use all the colours, so if I didn't want to use the teal green for example, I, didn't, I wouldn't have to, I could just, if I didn't want to use the gold I wouldn't have to. Um, it's entirely up to you how you represent whatever the picture is in colours on your eye. And obviously, no two people see colour exactly the same, um, even without you know the fact that monitors display things differently, and even down to the time of day that you're doing your eye look. I mean. The fact I'm doing this at night could mean that, because obviously I'm working, I've got my kitchen lights on, which are standard lighting, light bulbs, um, but I have got my LED lamp on behind the camera to try and counteract the yellowness of the, the lights that you have in your house. So, you know, that could quite easily be subtly affecting how this looks. But it was just so hot during the day today. I tried to film and I just... It just wasn't happening. Even with the fan on, I was just sweltering and damn near passed out with the heat. So I thought, no, this is a silly idea. Just film later when it cools down a bit. 
So that's what I'm doing. This is such a lovely grey. It's, it's, it's rare to find a grey that doesn't pull charcoal, but that stays grey. Do you know what I mean by that? It, it, it's sort of... You'll, you'll find like a dove grey quite often, and you'll find a charcoal grey quite often, but to find this mid-toned grey, which stays grey, is actually quite difficult nowadays to find anyway, or at least I've... In, in the palettes that I've got, I've found that to be the case. Right, clean the brush off. Yes, if you've not watched Anne, you're really missing a treat. She is a fantastic woman, she really is. I'm just going to grab a spray. Uh, this is, if you have a look in my description box, I've got a film brushes I recommend. This is one of the animal brushes from the AliExpress set. This is medium shader brush number two. And I'm going to go into the teal called Entitled. Pack that onto the brush and then wet the pigment, dry the ferrule off. Never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will screw the pigment up you will end up with hard pan and that hard pan will eventually if you keep doing it completely corrupt the whole completely corrupt the whole of the shadow that's pretty I wonder if there's enough on there to do the other one as well Well, would you look at that? Now you can see I'm just putting this on the middle section of the eye, but you can also see it's an opaque enough shimmer that it actually covers the grey that I'd already put down. And yes, that shimmer will end up transferring up, but do you know what? I really don't mind today. I genuinely don't mind. That entitled is a lovely shade. I must try and do another look with that soon. I think I've only ever used entitled dry before now. It's the first time I've used it wet. So that's that's nice. Not too much fallout either. Which is good to see. Right clean the brush off and now I'm going into Thirsty and I'm going to pick up some of that Lick pigment and again wet the pigment I always dry the ferrule off so that there's no liquid going down loosening the glue that's holding the bristles I'm looking down into a little mirror here because obviously I'm blind in this eye so if I close this one not a lot of makeup happens. And I just want this pop of gold right here. To symbolise the dancer on that gorgeous teal stone. I'm just going to dry the brush off, pick up a little bit more use it dry just to blend to deepen up the gold and just to blend over where the teal is so we don't actually lose that beautiful gold Mm, I like that. Right, go and pick in a bit more of that pigment up. Now this side I do have to stretch the lid out because you can see I've got super deep creasing there. And if I don't do that, the shimmers all sort of pack into the, the super deep creasing. And then throughout the day as I move my eye, 
I end up showering down my face which is not good at all. Um, that was caused 40 odd years ago when I was you know five years old at the ophthalmic because I used to be able to see from this side just not very well and they were trying to find out why I didn't eventually lose my sight in that eye until I was 13 so I'm just going to use the pigment dry to buff over where the two colours meet. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot as it happens. As it happens. Right. I am going to pause you while I bung some foundation on, etc. And I will be back to finish off the eye look with you. So I'll see you, well you'll see me right now, I'll see you when I next press record. I am back and of course I went for blue brows because, well, it's me, isn't it, really? Right, I'm grabbing my flat top brush here. And I think I'm going to dip into power again, which is the grey that I used. And I'm just going to sort of continue it up the side here and then run it under my bottom lashes. The reason I'm doing this is because um, I've really been suffering recently in terms of runny eyes. My fibro is kicking my butt and one of my biggest symptoms with that, on my face at least, is... Um, super sensitive eyes so I can't put anything in the waterline at all um, and I I just can't do eyeliner because it just my eyes water so much it just ruins the whole eye look within about 10 minutes but what I have found is that by whatever dark shade I put through the crease if I continue that under the eye and then just almost imperceptibly do one darker stripe up the outside like that. It, it almost gives the same effect of pulling the eyes out and up that a winged liner would do without actually having to do a winged liner. So if you're suffering as well, there's a tip for you. And then I'm going to grab this brush. This is a flat top but chunky brush. Which Clearly didn't dry off properly. There we go. And I'm going to use this and I'm going to dip into flourishing, which is um, the teal matte, because I want to pick up on this teal here. And I'm just going to use that just to soften and buff out that lower lash line. This was the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, if you're wondering. Um, but any thick, chunky, flat top brush will work. Uh, I like flat top ones rather than rounded top, because you can get right up under your lashes then. And keep it an equal distance all the way along. Like that. Like that a lot. And then uh, this is a super, super old lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. And when I say years ago, I mean probably a decade or more ago. I'm just going to dip into Cullinan. I'm going to run that up under the tail of my brow. This is for the sort of brighter stone that's adjacent to the teal stones and I'm also going to run this on the inner corner and with my eye I found that it's most flattering to bring that underneath the tear duct and just sort of fuzz it in to the colour that I've run under my eyes Like so. 
I really like this. Right. I am going to pause you one more time while I chuck highlight all over my face and bung some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair or just put on a hat and um, I'll be back. I am back and I decided it was too hot to take my hair down so I bunged a cowboy hat on instead. I don't think I'm all right. Right, a uh, basic rundown of what I've got on my face. I used the Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut for the uh, blindingly bright highlight that I have going on right now. Uh, bronzer was from the Revolution Bronze and Glow. Blush was this one from my Gerard Cosmetics, uh, which is this one, uh, Honeymoon Palette, which I've had before I was a GC affiliate, so I've had that years and years and years, and I love it. Um, and despite having had it years, it, it barely looks like I've made a dent in the colours, so that's awesome, it's such a good investment. And the lipstick is MAC Lustre Lipstick in Midi Mauve. Uh, mascara is the uh, Essence Lash Princess with the green lid. So, I will put the picture back up there again. What do you think? Do you think I've captured the uh, dancing gold statue? on a teal rock surrounded by stormy grey seas and a beautiful blue sky. What do you think? I hope Anne's happy with it, especially as it's her picture. I've got to be honest, I think this is one of my favourite looks that I've done in this series. I'm really loving this. Right, now, obviously I have many, many more films you can watch, however, before you go and watch any of mine, I'm going to need you to go and watch Anne's film, please, especially seeing as how we used her picture. And you can see just how different or how similar our looks turn out so far. All of the looks that um, I've done with all the different people, only one of them has been even vaguely similar, and even that wasn't the same. So it's amazing how two people, or in some cases three people, if I'm doing it with the bitches, um, how two people can look at the same picture with the same colours and get drawn to completely different elements of it, which I love. I think that's great. Um, it's one of the reasons that I started this series because it just amazed me that you know people can look at the same palette and produce such vividly different looks and I just thought how would that work with two people using one picture as an inspiration that's what sparked this series off so I really hope you've been enjoying this I hope um, if you're one of my 4F babies you're going to go across and support Anne and give her some of the beautiful love that you always show me in my comment section thank you so much and if you have come here from Anne's section hi hello welcome uh, I'm the slightly nutty half Welsh half Yorkshire living in the south of England bird uh, who could blether on for hours about nothing but equally with fibro fog, can even forget my own name. Yes. Mhm. Mm it it's happened. Trust me. It it has happened. Right. Um. If you are one of my subscribers, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people again. They are unringing the bell. And if you've chosen all notifications, sometimes when you go and check. You're not receiving all notifications anymore. I know this because my husband is a fan of this channel. And he's got notifications turned on. All notifications. 
and he didn't get a notification for my last three films that went up. And then when we checked, he'd been unsubscribed completely. My husband. Do you think he would dare unsubscribe from me? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Okay. As I said, please double check you are still subscribed if you still want to be here and see me. Uh, if you have missed films, um, just go to the most recent uploads and catch up on what you've missed, but only after you've watched Anne's film. Unless you're here from Anne's channel, in which case, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and uh, have a good old binge watching session. Right, that's enough from me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.